Hi there, I'm Dr. Albert Chung and welcome to your friendly proctologist. Thank you so much for joining me today. I want to really send out a heartful thank you, thank you to all your support. If you have not subscribed already, please click that red subscribe button and ring the bell and also give the video a like. It greatly helps to help this video reach more people so that we can all learn about our bottom ends and not be afraid anymore. Today's topic is a little bit different than the bottom end talks I usually do, but it is a topic I am passionate about, which is insurance. And no, I'm not selling insurance to you. I want to educate you on some of the insider tips that you may not be aware of. And so this is something that can arm you with information so that you can participate in discussions and be a little bit more in charge of what goes on behind the scenes with your health care. All right, so really there are two major tips here that I want to present to you and they could potentially save you a lot of money. So first of all, it's regarding colonoscopies and in particular, the screening colonoscopy. And a screening colonoscopy is really two parts there. A colonoscopy by itself is that procedure where they look inside your bottom end, look inside your entire colon for polyps or cancer, right? Because at age 45, people in the US of A should start getting colonoscopies to prevent this disease. Okay, what about the screening part? The screening part puts a little qualifier on the colonoscopy. It changes the conditions a little bit, meaning the screening colonoscopy is for people who do not have any symptoms or signs or hints of colon cancer in their body, right? So it's really a healthy average risk person for colon cancer that would receive a screening colonoscopy. And the situation at doctor's office most often goes, you know, they're there for their annual checkup. The doctor will say, sir, look at that. Happy birthday. You're 45 years old. You're healthy. You work out. You don't have any medical conditions. You don't have any belly pain. You don't have any bleeding from your bottom end or anything like that. But guess what? Congratulations, you're also due for your first colonoscopy. And that is the scenario I'm talking about for screening colonoscopy. Okay, so what's the secret number one? What's the insider tip? The insider tip number one is we, if you are receiving a screening colonoscopy or you fit into that group that qualifies for a screening colonoscopy, Pretty much nearly all healthcare insurance providers cover this at no cost to you or at very minimal cost, if anything, okay? So how does, how does that qualify? Is that an automatic thing? I mean, the doctor just says, you're due for a screening colonoscopy and then you just go get it done and you just walk out without having to pay anything? I mean, what? What is going on behind the scenes and how do you ensure that you're not going to have to pay for anything? Let me tell you how. The first thing is when the doctor, your doctor, orders that colonoscopy in the computer, okay? The first thing is the test is the colonoscopy like we talked about. But what makes it that screening special colonoscopy that's free is the diagnosis attached to that colonoscopy. In the healthcare world, every test must have a diagnosis attached to it. If you got lab work, blood drawn, there's a reason for it, you know? Annual checkup, you know? Or you had a fever, etc. Or an x-ray, you an injured your ankle, ankle pain, it would be the diagnosis. Ankle swelling, you get the idea. Colonoscopy, however, the diagnosis for a screening one where you want to get it covered is screening colonoscopy. That's the diagnosis, okay? 
What happens from there is that those two are attached together. And with that, the doctor is now able to sign the order. And then you can go on and see another provider and, you know, get their referral to get the test done. What happens after that doctor signs it though, it also gets processed by your insurance company. Okay. Your insurance companies also sees that the test has been ordered colonoscopy, but the crucial thing is what was the diagnosis? Okay. If the screening is there, the insurance will say, yes, this patient qualifies. They're the correct age. It's a screening. The diagnosis is also correct. Therefore, we would not charge, we'll go by the rules for a screening test, okay? And typically, again, like I said, that cost is nearly zero. What happens if it's not the screening diagnosis though? So let me walk you through that. So you're back in your doctor's office, the doctor's talking to you and you may have said like, hey, I have had like, you know, a dot of blood on my tissue paper like once a month, but it's like, you know, it goes away and it's not a big deal. I'm what, not, not worried about it. It's something you mentioned in passing, okay? And the doctor says, huh, well, you're eight, you're 45. So you know what, you need a colon, you need a, you need a colonoscopy. And uh, you say, that sounds like a great idea. I wanna be healthy, maintain my health. You get the colonoscopy order in by the doctor, but the doctor puts what diagnosis under? Bleeding per rectum, okay? Instead of the screening. Now what happens? You still can go on and get that colonoscopy done, but what's the difference here is that when that paperwork gets hits your insurance company, they see that colonoscopy, and then they see that blood per rectum, and they, they give you a big, you are not covered. Why? Because the screening diagnosis is not there. Therefore, this is now a diagnostic colonoscopy. And you're like, what? What? Wait, what is, what is diagnostic? And why does that change the whole process of how much I'm responsible for and coming out of my pocketbook? Diagnostic tests mean that there is a diagnosis that requires investigation. And so you have symptoms, therefore you have, must have some pre-existing problem and therefore this test will not be covered, okay? It's just like any other test with like an x-ray like I gave you with that ankle. There is no such thing as a screening ankle test because there is no disease process with an ankle that would provide this type of screening program. So it's a diagnostic test. It's a diagnostic x-ray for your ankle. So insurance will charge you whatever is appropriate, whatever is according to your plan. Going back to the colonoscopy, you now are responsible for that colonoscopy test because you had symptoms before. Therefore, it is no longer a screening test. The insurance says, sorry, sir, that does not qualify for a screening test. You do have screening test benefits, but in this case, because of the diagnosis that was entered with that colonoscopy, you are responsible. So I know you're probably blowing your tops off right now that this is the most ridiculous thing ever. And I completely empathize with you because if you had known something beforehand, you're not, you know, you would have maybe thought a little bit differently. Okay. And we're not trying to cheat the insurance company. Let me explain that. But this is helpful information because why errors happen all the time. Errors in the, in hospitals, but also paperwork, tons of errors happen every millisecond of the day. So if a doctor accidentally puts in the wrong diagnosis, it would be nice to know what, it would be nice to know ahead of time before that diagnosis and tests are pushed through. Your insurance company gets it because it's much more difficult to undo things, change things. Let's say to the insurance company, no, 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 that was a mistake. 
No, the insurance company is very, very, very difficult to fight for that kind of thing. And it's on purpose, believe me. All right. So what about the second tip here? All right. The second tip here is regarding this new test, ColoGuard. No, this is not a ColoGuard advertisement, but it does have to do with that test. Okay, so ColoGuard also screens for polyps and cancers, meaning it's detecting this disease in people that are of age 45 years that do not have symptoms, right? So you send off a stool sample in this test. You poop in a cup and then someone else analyzes it. You don't have to do the inconveniences of a colonoscopy like medications that are given during it, prepping and pooping your brains out, missing two days of work, etc. So you think this test is actually quite accurate, which it is by the way, and it sounds like a great deal. I think I'm gonna do this screening test for my health instead of a colonoscopy, which by the way is a perfectly fine decision to make. We'll talk about colon cancer screening some other day, but there are many different types of tests for colon cancer screening and you don't have to pick one, okay? So, let's say you ask your doctor for a Cologuard test. The doctor says, great, you're 45, let's put that screening diagnosis in with the Cologuard test. You complete the test and the results come back to you, okay? In the cases where the Cologuard says negative, no suspicion for colon cancer or polyps, perfect. You get the test covered by insurance, typically you don't have to pay anything. Awesome, right? But what about the other situation? Let's say it's suspicious or it's positive for polyps or cancer. Then what do you do? So you go back to your doctor, you say, this is the result, what's the next step? And the doctor would then say, well, the next step is to actually go inside your colon and look because the Cologuard is a very indirect way of detecting colon cancer, right? It does it by looking at the DNA that's mixed in with your poop. But we have no idea where these polyps or cancers located. We don't know how big the polyp is necessarily. All those factors are still a question mark. So you've got to go in and look. What happens next? Colonoscopy order then goes in the computer. But what's the diagnosis? The diagnosis will be positive Cologuard test. It will not be screening. It will say positive Cologuard test, okay? So what do you think is gonna happen once you, that information hits the insurance company? Yes, you guessed it. The insurance company will make you pay. It is not a screening test. You've already had that screening test done, the Cologuard. So now the colonoscopy, that will be charged to you. And again, you're probably blowing your top off because the benefit of Cologuard is not fully realized unless you have a negative test, right? If you have a positive something there, then you're gonna have a colonoscopy anyway which, you know, for many people is still worth doing because they don't want a colonoscopy first. But then, this is for my health. There's tons of studies to prove it. Why am I having to pay for it when everybody else can get it free? Why am I being punished for my decisions or my preferences? And this is actually an active fight right now and, and it's not quite publicized very well. And so I want to bring it to your attention, okay? If you feel strongly about that Cologuard test, be prepared to do a colonoscopy and face the fiscal or the change out of your pocketbook if that result is questionable or turns out to have something in it, okay? Or you may say, I'm just going to bite the bullet and get the colonoscopy done instead. Okay, 
And this video is not really a pro and con between Cologuard and colonoscopy, but I want to ensure that people understand that this may factor you into your decision making. Some people, it may make that it may tip them over to the colonoscopy side first. And for other people, I say, you know, no, I, 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 that doesn't sway me one bit. I'm still going for the color guard. I really don't care about the cost and this is what's best for me. And that's what I want to inform you about. And so I hope you enjoyed the video today. I hope I brought this issue to life and I hope you understand it as well. I try to make it as simple as possible. But the biggest thing is the insurance company just looks at paperwork and you need to ensure that when the doctor is entering that diagnosis, it is the correct one that you intend to have. Again, we're not trying to cheat the insurance company, but at the same time, we are educated and smart people, so we know what we need done, right? We're, we are directing our care, and we know what is going on with our health physically and how it's being paid for. All right. Thank you so much. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.